This week, America will choose a president. But the most important choice is happening right now as we choose the best of three snacks on. You tried it! You tried that. I'm Nick Norris with Kyle Shane Hancock. Howdy. Nick Geiger. Hello. How about that election? Election guys? week, guys. Election. Yeah. Can't believe how the election went, huh? That yeah. was great. Or the winner it in was two days. I don't remember. It's in a couple days. Yeah. Oh. oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I knew that. Come it went on. <laughs> went amazing. I'm sure. No, it's in two days. <laughs> It's going to go amazing. It will go I'm amazing. Sure. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to know whether I have to leave the country. Yeah. You were in the grocery store. I mean, I am frequently. You know. mm-hmm. Can you specify? Oh, did you vote there? Story. Mm-hmm. I, I, <laughs> I went to the grocery store and voted. Mm-hmm. Uh, On which milk to buy? Yep. And turns out it was the white one. Uh, white milk. I don't know what. Chad, do you still drink skim milk? Unfortunately, no. Um, we switched. We switched to one percent uh, because, well, so my wife likes two percent, and I like skim, and uh, I just bought one percent because both of us then are mildly happy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now no one's happy. <laughs> yeah, and I just I didn't want to buy two different types of milk. Like that's how lazy I right, am. Yeah. Okay. Skim milk is just. Cloudy water. Yeah, this, that's, no point. that's how my wife always describes it. She says blue water, and I'm like, yeah, I know it's great. You can chug so much of it without stopping. Two <laughs> percent is the way to go. My 2%. wife is buying fat-free 2%. lactate milk, and I'm like, no. I mean, I guess I just use it for cereal. So who cares? Whole milk. Whole. I drink butter. Two percent is fine, but whole, whole milk is too much. Although I will gladly drink whole milk if that's the choice. Really, I, I love <laughs> that's milk. Good. That is some glup shit or bullshit right there. All right, you're in the grocery store. Yeah. Set, a, set the scene. Um, so I'm walking down an aisle. It's not a very oh, yeah. busy store right at the moment. It's like a random weeknight. I think I just dropped my kid off at basketball and I was killing time. Got a few mm-hmm. few things for the grocery store. Killing time in the grocery store. <laughs> just seeing what's up at the grocery store. Was not all that <laughs> happening, it turned out. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm behind this lady in the aisle and she's like loudly speaking on her phone on like Speaker or like FaceTime with someone like real loud. And she, you know how you go to the grocery store and you get one of those carts. that has got like the squeaky wheel. Like, like when you, you go and it's kind of annoying. Every right. Time you push it. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. They usually do that. And she's going, she's real loudly in her phone going, this car is squeaky. She's just yelling it into the phone. And I'm like <laughs> tr- behind her, like trying not to laugh. She goes, you hear that? And she's like holding the phone near her cart and rolling it back and forth. And goes, squeak, squeak, squeak. You hear that? Thing squeaky, and I go, and I like, I think I passed by her, and she saw me grinning, and she looks over at me and goes, "You hear that, right?" I go, "Oh yeah, I, I heard it." She goes, "Squeaky is a motherfucker," and I c- c- could not stop laughing. I'm like, "Yeah, uh huh." She goes, "See, he heard it." And she's like yelling over the phone. I just kept walking. So it was very innocuous, but just yelling at a stranger, "Squeaky is a motherfucker," made me laugh for a good while. Yikes! She talking to. Yeah, was she talking into like a granola bar or something? <laughs> she, <laughs> she was speaking to the quick roads guy on the oatmeal, <laughs> and he was like, "Uh huh, I hear you." Four score and seven years ago. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's all the whole story. Yeah. Her car you know what little, squeaks. Uh, what's that? You know what else squeaks? What? Rats. Oh, I know rats, <laughs> but only when they do what? <laughs> Smooth transition. Talk. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think she had accidentally gotten the skim wheel? And that's the problem. If she'd gotten that 2% wheel, it wouldn't have squeaked. You think the 2% <laughs> squeaks less? <laughs> More fat content? All right. So this less is this, this rat-related news story is from uh, metro.co.uk. Here's the headline. Taxidermist turns rats into, quote, sexy showgirls with nipple covers and fake eyelashes. So uh, it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. Yeah. It says a mother who transforms frozen rats into sexy showgirls with colored feathers, handmade nipple covers and fake eyelashes has said her novelty taxidermy business regularly requires 12 hour days to keep up with demand. So this woman's 36. She runs a business called Showtime Taxidermy from her home where she sells quirky and bizarre rats for one hundred and forty eight pounds. So whatever that is. Yeah. 
probably too much. That's even more in dollars, I think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. probably. Um, the rodents much, are dressed yeah. and posed as glam performers. Uh, and she says it started four years ago. And then uh, let me show you guys a picture of this uh, fucking these rats. I'm just seeing a lady. <laughs> oh, okay. There She's holding one rat on each yeah. side of her. So here's so the it was kind of like, yeah, done up like uh, Lady Gaga after a yeah. costume change or something. Yeah. Yeah. She's got two rats. One of them's white. Those look better than I thought they would, honestly. They do look less creepy than I thought they would, yeah. They look less. I think they look more creepy There's, cause, because the one with nipple covers has six nipple covers on. I guess rats have six nipples. I'm picturing um, just like if you or I were to try to pose a rat with like a little mm-hmm. dress on it or something like, like I thought it was going to be a clearly dead rat in a dress. Like at least <laughs> it's just a... it's, instead it's a clearly dead rat with nipple covers. I don't know. It's just a slumped over limp rat with a tulus <laughs> turn on. It's split Good in job, half Novak. from the it mouse looks trap that caught it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just blood and guts yeah. out. No head on it. <laughs> Cat bites on it. She takes uh, some rats still in the trap and puts nipple covers on them. <laughs> <laughs> so as she said, when people come up to me, they gasp or they clutch their pearls when they see what I have made and they get really excited. It still blows my mind that my artwork is all over the country. It's a really cool feeling to be weird, to do something different and to have so many people enjoy it. That's my favorite part. Yeah. So it's definitely art. How would you guys? Oh, here's another. Here's another picture of one a little further down the article. Yeah, that uh, one is sexy. It's wearing yeah. like a big feather headdress, mm-hmm. and it's got big fake eyelashes on it. Some it's like the eyelashes a make it. The eyelashes make it look like a puppet. Like it looks fake with the. Eyelashes. Yeah, it looks really mu- a lot more fake than like, like taxidermy toy. would. Yeah. Right. The caption of that one says the the rats look fantastic in their jewels. They no longer look like rat like. They look like rats, but they don't look like real animals anymore. Like, it's so mm-hmm. done up, and the costume is so fancy. Do you think if you saw, like, a dog walking around with a bunch of nipple covers, you're like, look at that beautiful toy. Like, it wouldn't <laughs> look real anymore. Mm-hmm. Just imagine being like, hey, I can't come out tonight. I gotta make more rat nipple covers. She said 12-hour days she's working. Yeah, 12-hour yeah, days to get these rats. She says... She buys the rats frozen from an ethical local breeder who supplies food for zoos. They cost $4 yeah. each. Yeah, ethical. Yeah, we wait for some of the rats to die, and then we give them <laughs> to you in a big bucket. Yeah, mm-hmm. ethical. Then you put them in a tutu. <laughs> Take a photo. <laughs> then what I'm going to have you do is pose this one like it's doing the cha-cha so some creep can masturbate to it for 148 pounds. <laughs> She says, I don't have a big home, so when I have a stockpile growing, the place that I put them is my laundry room, and I've hung dowel rods across the room so that I can hang them. (laughs) That's what I've got going on. I've just got this tunnel to my washing machine and dryer, and the rest is just rats. That's my world. Yeah, I mean, that's 12-hour days because... None of those days are spent socially with anyone coming to her house. Like, <laughs> come over, just bucket of this rats. This one's in dressed like Princess Die because of ethics. <laughs> <laughs> and they say that you lived your life like a fucking dead rat, <laughs> frozen in a bucket ethically. <laughs> this one's only got five nipple covers. It had a wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Jan Rhett Jackson. You've heard of Crazy Cat Lady. This is a crazy rat lady. Yeah. Um, yeah. But she does say it's the coolest job in the world. I get to be no, creative, artistic, have my own schedule. Um, I couldn't improve on this. I love it. That's what she says. She couldn't improve on this. The equivalent of one hundred ninety-three dollars. And <laughs> I'm actually Christ. thinking if I can sell these things for 200 bucks a pop, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to get me some rats. <laughs> I'm going to get all ethical up in here on these rats. <laughs> <laughs> this, this does, if it was a little cheaper, this would be like maybe a decent, you know, like white elephant gift or like, you know, some, yeah. like something. Yeah, you a get. dead rat. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You get like your brother as a joke or something. <laughs> Novak's going to get one. Like he's going to dress him up in like a Hakeem Olajuwon jersey, like posterizing <laughs> another rat or something. That'd be pretty great. <laughs> it's just stapled to a plastic 
a basketball hoop hanging from it. <laughs> just hanging just from hand. it. <laughs> yeah, what what would you want your dead taxidermied rats to be dressed up as? Like big sexy thong or like you know, something classy, like some comfy pajamas or something. I guess that's not classy. Yeah, I want a rat twerking on a stripper yeah. pole. That's what I, want. <laughs> I think I want him to be in like, he's an astronaut. And so it just looks like a little astronaut. And you're like, there's a dead rat in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want a taxidermied cat with a dead rat dangling from its mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this um. one's called Buzz Aldrat. <laughs> what's that a little like spaceman toy nope dead rat inside <laughs> <laughs> this one's a cage with a dead rat in it oh, look at the craftsmanship this one's wearing one of leonardo da vinci's diving suits <laughs> you put it in the bathtub it sinks to the bottom <laughs> This one looks like Rosie the Riveter, only a dead rat. <laughs> All right, let's eat these snacks. We got three cookies we're going to eat today. Rate them out of five point scale. Love that, like that, different to that, dislike that, and hate that. Let's start with, since we're into deep in the fall here, the pumpkin spice cheesecake sandwich creams. These are from... Uh, 365, which is like the wait, where's that? The that's the Whole Foods brand brand. for Whole Foods brand, yeah. Yeah, So, all of these snacks today, courtesy Whole Foods, they're not all 365 brands, but yeah, good old Whole Foods. So, this costs about as much as a dead ride than these cookies (laughs) 148 pounds per cookie. (laughs) It's about Oreo sized, uh, sandwich cookie with what appears to be like two. Uh, probably pumpkin flavored outsides and then the inside supposedly the cheesecake cream these cookies are dry af they're really dry unnaturally so yeah drier than a dead rat hanging in a laundry room yeah live rats notoriously wet but dead rats <laughs> arid as the desert it tastes like a Biting into sand, like it really is <laughs> off-putting. You guys like pumpkin? Guy here is the only one maybe I could see liking like a pumpkin spice drink. No, I do like pumpkin beer, um, and I love, 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 love pumpkin pie. Like I love pumpkin pie, but I'm not into all the like the pumpkin flavored stuff necessarily. Well, what do you think of this cookie? Um, usually when they do pumpkin pie flavored stuff or pumpkin flavored stuff. The cookie or the the graham is like almost like ginger bread cookies ish. That's what kind of this reminds me of only not too strong of ginger. The cookie's just dry as shit. It's dry and <laughs> a motherfucker. Um <laughs> the cream is fine. They are all together a little too so I almost wish it was like a sharper almost like a spice element to it. Like a like a gram or something like a little sharper to balance out how sweet it is as it, they're fine i mean they're in, it's indifferent to that i eat them but i don't love this cookie that much so what'd you give it uh i'm indifferent yeah different all right indifferent to start chad what do you think yeah these cookies are drier than a potential date when they enter rat lady's laundry room um Mm-hmm. They are very dry. Uh, okay, uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> I I kind of ex- I don't know. I expected more flavor. They're like shockingly bland. Actually, the the cookie itself, like yeah. I, I think it needs to really. It doesn't taste like pump. I mean, no, it's not supposed to taste like pumpkin. It's supposed to taste like pumpkin spice. Blah blah blah. But it needs to taste like more, like more cinnamon, more ginger. Right, like crank that stuff up. And if if it had more of that flavor, maybe I could get over the like kind of shitty consistency of the the cookie. Maybe these would be really good dunked in a nice big thick glass of skim milk. But um, <laughs> just eating them on their own, I, I don't know how you can do it. And the cream also is like, I don't know. It's 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 probably the best part of the cookie, but it's also kind of fucked. Um, I'll give these an indifferent to that also. <laughs> I'm debating between indifferent and dislike. Uh, yeah, the flavor is definitely an 
and indifferent because it's just sort of there. Like the the you can taste the pumpkin pretty clearly. I don't taste anything that I would say is cheesecake. Like you could just leave the word out and uh, wouldn't make a difference. I ultimately I'm gonna downgrade them to the dislike just because of how crumbly and dry they are, like in a gross kind of way. So uh, we got a two indifference and a dislike. Not a very strong showing. Uh, let's next go to the chocolate, the crispy chocolate chip cookies. The company is Fancy Pants Baking Company. And these are bite-sized crispy chocolate chips. I don't normally like a, these small chocolate chips, though. Yeah, I'd rather usually eat a bigger chocolate chip cookie. But I guess for bagged ones, it's okay. I do like this crispy style of cookie, though. I know it's not everyone's favorite. Yeah, they're like uh, a Tate's brand, which is kind of yeah. popular now. They are crispy, as the name implies. Mm-hmm. Good amount of chips in there, I think. These are stiffer than a sexually suggestive rat. <laughs> On the back, it says, when it comes to cookies, some things are just timeless. That's why we bake ours with the same pantry ingredients I had in my kitchen when Fancy Pants first started. Homemade taste never goes out of style enjoy and then what well, i don't know the founder's name just a signature these are stiffer than a potential date before they go into rat lady's laundry room there you go um mm-hmm. that's good stiff and all they were is a potential date <laughs> <laughs> as i'm about to approach a woman i might go on a date with i get so <laughs> rock hard <laughs> i work from home start to get excited Taxidermying rats. Um, that's the sound it makes. So <laughs> the trumpet in my pants peters out. I I don't know. Um, I kind of thought these would be a little better too. Uh, they're not. They're good. I I do think they're good. They're not as disappointing to me as the the cheesecake cookies were. These are good. The flavor is not 100% what I want from chocolate chip cookies. Um, It's kind of comes through a little more in the aftertaste, but it does have a good crisp. It's a nice size, very sort of like addictive and poppable. I'll bet these dunked in a nice thick glass of of skim milk would be uh, really, really great. Uh, So uh, uh, but they're not perfect chocolate chip cookies for me, um, which I kind of hope they would be. Like that for me. I mean, it should be a real easy like that. Like, it's just a, it seems almost like a layup. Yeah. But there's something weird about the taste. Like, that's what I'm saying. And I see what you're getting at. Like, the aftertaste is not great. It's not the aftertaste you want from a chocolate chip cookie. Mm -hmm. Chocolate chip cookies, top of my list for desserts. Like, the best, world's best chocolate chip cookie, I would take over just about any other dessert. And just something wrong with I don't know if it's the chips they're using or what it is, but I can't. The homemade can't put my pantry on ingredients it. have gone stale. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm not used to high quality uh, homemade ingredients. Spent my life. These are too homemade. Cons- Make them in a fucking factory. <laughs> <laughs> Spent my life consuming processed foods, and now my body does not know how to react. Um. Yeah, and what is it to call it homemade? You know, it's in a <laughs> it's in a fucking package I bought at the store. These aren't all at that homemade. Whole Foods, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Giant chain owned by Amazon. These are not homemade. <laughs> They're nothing as fancy they were... as Keebler's. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they were better, and because it should be really easy, and you fucked it up, mm. I'm gonna give it an a different to that. Geiger, what do you think? No, that's and... sour today. It sounds a yeah. little like yeah. It sounds a little like you're judging it against expectations and not based on what it is. Um, I think this is a layup for me. This is these are good. Like they're crispy. Like Chad said, they're small enough where you could eat like I don't know the whole bag, uh, which was probably like six cookies. Mm-hmm. Um, the chocolate is good. I thought. I mean, for this kind of store bought chocolate chip cookie, they're fine. Um, I agree with you that after aftertaste is a little weird. I don't think it's the chocolate. I think it's the mm-hmm, cookie part mm-hmm. that's just something strange about it. But I do think, <laughs> uh, I do think it's like stiff as a guy's cunt no, before a no, date. No, no, no. 
It's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also think the aftertaste is kind of weird. Like aftertaste, no. are you guys stiff no. dick after a date? No, no, no. Um, so I think, um, I think it's a like that for me. <laughs> no, stop doing that. No, <laughs> don't do it. Two, two likes and a different, a very beatable score. And we've got some look like pretty tasty chocolate cookies coming up after the segment. Geiger segment time. Yeah. Hey, Chad. How squeaky is your segment? Yeah. As a motherfucker. This is a segment about you guys making jokes about how stiff something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at who's too good to make a stiff joke over there suddenly. This Geiger, is, yeah. please tell me you have something for tournament month. I was about to ask you if you knew what month it was. You know what it's month not, it is, right? It's the, a tournament new fucking month. month. It's now no. November. No. Tournament month started halfway through October yeah. and it's continues a four consecutive week period. November. Yeah. Okay. And some of us knew that. Two We've of the people all knew that. had tournament segments yeah. all this whole month. Mm-hmm. So we are going to do a tournament. Um, wow. It, it is time once again to return to the world of fighting mascots. So we have yes. gone all rats. over the globe to different, yeah, it's just different types of sexy rats. <laughs> we have a uh, Vule Vuku Shwe Avik rat. <laughs> uh, no, and so we, uh, we've gone all over the world. We've done the Premier League. We've done all the, the major Americans, but we left out the fifth major American sports league, guys. The Indoor Football League. Uh, the replacement for uh, arena football. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will warn you up front. These may be my most fucked seedings. These were some difficult <laughs> teams to seed in here. Loose definition of league. Yes. <laughs> also, like it's looser than the definition of a month. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, the old people at the indoor football league, a have seventeen teams, which is dumb. That's not hard. What? Don't have divisions. <laughs> Right. Uh, and two of the teams haven't even started playing yet. They're like starting twenty twenty five. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, so. it's this, this is like a brand new league, right? Like, yeah, they've been around. I think a couple years at least, because there was like a. I think Novak, you and I were watching it uh, like a month or so ago. Um, and I said, "Hey, we should do this for tournament month." And you said, "Yeah, like four weeks worth of tournaments." I said, "Yeah, that one." And you said, <laughs> "Okay, I'm in." The you know the month that spans across two different months. That's what he yeah. said. <laughs> Yep. Were, the rats were stiffer than a potential date before finding out you and I were watching indoor arena football. <laughs> yeah, they came they came over to, to a guy to two guys watching football like this is a great date idea. Where's the one that fucks with the dead rats? Okay. So because of the 17 team tournament, we are gonna have to have the first seed gets I'm just doing the whole thing as a one through seventeen. Mm-hmm. And the first seed gets a buy. So we're going to do half the bracket here, half the bracket later. You'll find out who the first seed is next time when we continue tournament month and a half. Uh, okay. <laughs> so we're going to start with the 215 matchup. Mm-hmm. That is the San Diego Strike Force. Now, I left it as the two seed because I don't know what the fuck you two idiots are going to decide a Strike Force is. <laughs> uh, I looked up the definition, and it's like a, a military unit, you know, right. that, or a group of federal agents that are pursuing like a, the mob, apparently, <laughs> like a task okay. force kind of. Yeah, thing. I, I pictured like SEAL Team Six or whatever. Right. Yeah. It's a group versus, of professional, uh, yeah, military soldiers. Folk. Yeah. 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 Uh, versus the Iowa Barnstormers. Now, the Barnstormers back in the day were like. They flew like the Model T airplanes and did like loop de loops and shit at the county fair. So, so they have planes. They, they have planes. Hmm. I didn't know if you guys would decide the Strike Force also had. I don't like, think I knew that a barnstormer meant a person doing. That's what it was when I looked it up. I I, I understood the barnstormer to be since like then. the definition online might have changed. Right. My normal definition for barnstormer was like someone that went town to town and like competed against other people, okay. but. I think when I looked up this one, that that definition, it matches with their helmet because it looks like it's got like old like oh. fighter pilot goggles on the helmet. So none of it has to do with actual barns. No, or storms. I think now it's called the Capital Stormers. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> they're called the. It says here the <laughs> Iowa January Six Capital Stormers. <laughs> 
can and seal led... team six. <laughs> <laughs> they are led the, by the QAnon shaman. <laughs> it's uh, their quarterback is QB non shaman. <laughs> uh, they're playing the hapless security guards. <laughs> I should call it hapless. They were they're in a bad spot. I don't, I don't know. It was a legal catch because he had two feet on Nancy Pelosi's desk before he went out of bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Donald Trump is definitely not their GM. He has made that very clear. He has no association with the team. So um, I will stick the dealer here with Novak and make you pick first. Strike Force versus Barnstormer. Go. Um, Barnstormer does seem kind of cool. I'm looking at these pictures and it's like those old like biplane yeah. things with the... Uh, where like you the, can walk you, out on the wing. Wait, like the Googled Wright Brothers pictures. type of planes. You yeah. Googled pictures because yeah. you wanted to see the Barnstormers cum gutters? Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't fuck Mary Kill. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason I Google pictures on this podcast. <laughs> Look at these strike forces cum gutters. <laughs> and you can see it. The guy's out on the plane wing. Mm-hmm. And the wind is whipping his pants tight against him. So you can kind of see. <laughs> <laughs> um... But I think they're going to have a hard time. I, that seems like a really old timey type of plane. You think? I feel like these <laughs> strike force weapons are just going to like rip through that those wings like it's paper mm-hmm. mache. So I'm going to have to go strike force. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, the strike force team, right? They've got all the latest guns and <laughs> <laughs> night vision yep. goggles, probably. Yeah, sure do. <laughs> guns. <laughs> <laughs> All the latest guns. <laughs> I'm just picturing like the Red Baron getting out there, like I've got them, and the fucking Seal Team Six with all their fucking equipment and night vision, just murdering him. <laughs> just rocket launch him out of the sky. Um, yeah. That's you a guys gun. got your latest guns ready. <laughs> <laughs> Load your latest guns. <laughs> <laughs> this is stiffer than my latest gun. Um, yeah, I will. <laughs> The Red Baron might have the earliest gun. He might have just a big, like, ramrod shot cannon over that plane. I agree with Novak Strike Force. Okay. The seven. No, this dumb league has two teams in Arizona somehow. So the 7 10 is going to be the battle Are there for Arizona. Even two cities in Arizona? Wow. <laughs> One is the, the, the seven seed. Northern Arizona Wranglers. Now, a Wrangler is an animal handler. However, particularly, usually meaning, and I think in this, based on this logo, it's like a cowboy Cattle? guy. It's no, a horse, a horse wrangler. Okay. So a horse wrangler against the number 10 seed, Arizona Rattlers, which is, of course, a baby's <laughs> rattle. Sexy uh, rattlers. <laughs> sexy <Yeah>. rattlers. <laughs> um, they guess they have like... Um, Nipple covers for every scale on the rattlesnake? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah okay. um, but yeah, rattlesnake versus a wrangler. What do you got? Uh, Chad, we'll start with you. I assume like a horse wrangler, right? Like they're uh-huh. this is a cowboy type. So yes. they've probably had to deal with snakes. There's a the snake wild. in my boot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Let me get my latest six shooter. <laughs> and then, you know, take the take it to the snake. Uh, on the other hand, though, you know rattlesnakes, they can be deadly. Mm-hmm. They can be, uh, For sure. you know, they can be vicious. Um, they can rattle at you. All these things. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And uh, I don't really like cowboys, so I will go with the rattlers. Do you guys ever get those like rattlesnake egg prank things when you were kids? I had one. What? So like I someone it's an gave egg, me... but it's but you'd go to cook it and then a rattlesnake pops out. And bites you in the <laughs> yeah, face. surprise, and then you get you, you would die from the venom. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, it was like a yeah, little had... envelope, and it said rattlesnake eggs in it. I don't know, like who'd be dumb enough to believe that this tiny envelope, a kid like me, and then inside was like a metal clip with a washer and two rubber bands. So you're supposed to roll like wind the washer and then slide it in. And then someone like open the thing and like say, look at this rattlesnake. And it starts like going and like rattling. And they think it's a snake in there and they get really scared. In an envelope? Yeah. Like a little envelope you would like put the tooth in. <laughs> what the f- yeah. Like a like an eight and a half by eleven. Like a little no, like a little order. manila envelope. Like a little <laughs> okay. look. It was I didn't say it was a copperfield level trick, but 
It's an envelope that said rattlesnake eggs. Yeah. You opened it up and inside was a letter telling you your parents were getting divorced. <laughs> <laughs> Why did this have to be delivered yeah. by certified courier? Yeah. Why are you giving it to me? This is a, a Panera bread. Oh, mom and dad don't love each other anymore. Okay. Fuck. Rattlesnake eggs again. Now what? <laughs> now dad in like jail? <laughs> all, all bad news. <laughs> delivered in rattlesnake eggs. <laughs> Son, <laughs> grandma's dead. <laughs> Son, <laughs> your mother's now making text every rats at home. <laughs> Damn it. I'm going to say cowboy or a wrangler. I mean, he's got boots and if he can wrangle a horse, and I don't think a snake should yeah. be a big he's deal. He's got for him. boots. He does have boots. That's all you need. He has all the yeah, latest boots. <laughs> Rattlesnake can't get through the latest boots, so I'm going to say uh, Wrangler. <laughs> yeah, did you say one before we started said, making Rattlesnake rattler, eggs? So, okay. Yeah, you got to break the tie. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, look, I guess the Wrangler in the title is an animal handler. If they, What kind of cowboy, what kind of fucking cowboy shows his face at the saloon after being felled by a rattlesnake? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fucking, what a, a bad one, that's who. Burn. Um, okay. Boot so technology I w- these days. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Techno- boot technology. Son, I have yeah. some news for you. <laughs> My cartwheel was squeaky as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these Wranglers now have the the new eye boot and stuff. They're all <laughs> the, all the latest boot. So okay. The third seed versus the fourteen. So we've got the three seeded San Antonio gunslingers. The old desperados with the guns oh, and they, they shoot the people. Guns, yeah. yeah, yeah, they have definitely the latest guns. <laughs> and number fourteen, the Tulsa Oilers. So just guys who work in an oil rig. Who look? That's a hard job. I'm sure those guys are mm-hmm. tough as shit. Yeah, I don't know how much mm-hmm. of the latest guns they've acquired, but look, you guys are too resourceful. These guys probably like. Oh, they have the nuclear codes. They'll shoot an oil derrick at somebody. Sure. Or you'll fuck them up with some weird shit. So I uh, see your guns, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> what are you I, talking I, about? You can't <laughs> shoot an oil derrick. Okay. Well, whatever. We're you always present realistic scenarios. Okay. Don't, yeah. Don't put words into our sure. Mind. Do. Um, I don't think the gunslingers have the latest guns because I don't no, think don't anyone know. has been called a Ooh. gunslinger. Uh, in a really mm-hmm. long time, like Patrick Mahomes, maybe. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the oil men, I do think, are pretty tough guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're probably pretty hot too. They, I, I would call them oil slingers. Yeah, right. Incredibly mm-hmm. hard job. Um, I, and so, are we talking about like the workers, or maybe like the there will be blood guy? I mean, is, I don't know that Daniel Day Lewis could be termed an oiler. Is it like, Daniel just Plainview? The land. Is it? Is their mascot Daniel <laughs> yeah. Plainview? Do yeah, they drink the, the other team's milk? Twirling milkshakes? his mustache, drinking him milkshake. But I do think one the, the key point here Ooh. is in the name of one of the characters, gun, gun. So I think they have a gun, and Slinger? oilers do not have a gun. Oh, okay. So I'm going to say gunslingers. Yeah. yeah. All due respect to oil workers, it's a hard job stripping the earth of all of its natural resources. Um, well, so, uh, uh, yeah. yeah, gunslinger. Yeah. The six seed Jacksonville Sharks, Florida, known for their shark population. Yeah. Versus the number 11, the Fisher's Freight. Fisher is in Indiana. I never heard of the fucking town. How bad are these fucking teams? So mm. it's just the picture is a freight train. So this is an odd one. I don't know how we do sharks versus a freight train, but you guys have to figure it out. So chat. Um, pretty easy, right? Like we so. always imagine this, this matchup there in like, you know, mm. a, a Coliseum style stadium. Right. But the and train so, is just, the train is not being driven necessarily. Right. The train like barrels into the stadium, right? Like choo choo. <laughs> And it, all it has to do, through. all it yeah, has to do like, is like run over piercing. the shark. Yeah. yeah, it's like snow piercer. It just has to run over the shark. The problem is the shark Uh-oh. is not on the train tracks, Uh-oh. right? So if the <laughs> shark isn't on the train tracks, then the freight train can't get the shark. Uh, so uh, I will go shark. Wait, hold on. But, but how but is, what is it the shark doing to the train? He just—it's like flopping around a little bit and like maybe nudges it enough to like derail it. 
<laughs> this is the megalodon. <laughs> yes, this is the megalodon. Yes, or or a sharknado, one of the two. Yeah. Do you think no? You think the shark nudges the train enough to win? <laughs> well, at first, my thought was train. Yeah, because yeah, it's just, it's just gonna run over the shark. Mm-hmm. But I was I didn't know it was the shark was megalodon. Yeah, yeah. that makes um, a difference. It. The Meg. That yeah. does make a difference because it's way bigger than a train. Right. Right, it's gigantic. But it still can't um, breathe outside of water. What if the train has to go into the water to fight it? That is yeah, tough. like who's to say it's... Over. Right. Yeah, so the whole terrain really makes a difference in this one. Mm-hmm. Um, but Like if they were battling pure... in Atlantis, shark. Yeah, mm-hmm. then shark, right? Shark, for sure. Um, I think the train is limited by the tracks, though. I don't think it has can go too far in this, so I think I'm gonna go with Megalodon. What's the train? It is limited only by the tracks. It's very profound. I like that. Mm-hmm. What is Megalodon truly? <laughs> it is limited by the ocean. <laughs> Deepest, bluest. My train has just <laughs> limiting tracks. All right. Let's stick with sharks then. Sharks is gonna live on to fight. The gunslinger. That could be a matchup. Mm. Yeah. You better bring the latest guns to take down Megalodon. Jason now that he's a Megalodon. Bit of a gunslinger, yeah. Yeah. He... Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he sure is. <laughs> uh, the gunslinger's whole problem. Oh, tell me about his problem. The guns are not the latest guns. <laughs> what if he has a harpoon gun? A harpoon gun could be very useful. A harpoon gun is not the latest gun. <laughs> don't, gun was invented long ago. Don't you remember like Wyatt Earp and uh, all those guys meeting at the town square with a giant harpoon gun? <laughs> he just, just, just like slams him up against the bank in the town. <laughs> but uh, Novak, remember the megalodon is not the latest shark. It is an ancient mm-hmm. shark as well. So that's true. So the ancient guns were the ones you need to use. <laughs> mm, could be. <laughs> What's the gun from? Uh... Eraser, <laughs> remember that gun? The rail gun, the rail <laughs> gun. Shoot through the walls, yeah. yeah. Those are the latest guns. <laughs> <laughs> I only know that because then it showed up in Perfect Dark. <laughs> uh, um, I think the gunslingers do not have enough firepower for the megalodon in this scenario. So megalodon. Yeah, I mean this is a tough one because they don't have the latest guns, but the shark's not the latest shark. Um, yeah, but man, uh, <laughs> but I'm literally the... having to make a note here that says Megalodon. So when we do this in two weeks, I re- we recall that it's a 27 ton shark. It doesn't matter if we recall that or not. Um, <laughs> he uh, might not be into that in two weeks. He could be yeah. a totally different shark. The shark he might not be that in one more round. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Here's my problem with Gunslinger is yeah. all I can think about with Gunslinger, because I think the Gunslinger is like the name of one of the like Dark Tower books or whatever. It's the name of the character in the Dark Tower books, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, all I can think of is like I, th- I told this story on the podcast before about like the time my camp counselor was like well, I was a little kid and he's like reading us Dark Tower and the Gunslinger is getting his fingers cut off by like this demon crab on the beach or something. And by the end of it, he can't even like shoot the crab because like all his fingers have been chopped off. I'm like, if a fucking crab can do that to a gunslinger, what's the Meg going to do? You know, I don't don't think the gunslinger has a chance. So I'll go the Mm -hmm. Meg. So to recap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The shark. Plus there was that crab story, Chad. Yeah. <laughs> the, the shark. Write that down so we remember it in Hold three on. weeks. Crab story. Make, make sure I got this. So the shark is now a prehistoric dinosaur of yore and beat the gunslinger because the gunslinger in one fictitious novel had his fingers removed by a crab. Do I have yeah. all that What right don't right? okay. you get? <laughs> it's a also, very clear A to B. <laughs> they also don't have the latest guns. Okay. Uh, now, a team of. Uh, uh, oh, look, going back up top. These guys do have the latest guns. This is the Strike Force mm. oh, against yeah, strike force. the Wrangler. Now, you can wrangle, you can manage some horses, but can you manage. All of the finest might of the American military, but they've got the latest boots. They do have the latest yeah. boots. It's boots versus guns. Which one? That's true. Like, what is soonest or later? But Wrangler isn't the latest jeans either. It's a kind mm-hmm. of old jeans. 
<laughs> nope, it's not. A Jeep Wrangler, not the latest vehicle. No. 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 Who's up? Chad's up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I yeah. didn't even I didn't even vote for Wrangler over Rattlesnake. Uh, I'm definitely not <laughs> voting for Wrangler over a team of guys with Uzis. So, uh, so in Lord of the Rings, there was one king of Gondor who wrangled horses, right? And he, uh, <laughs> no one's he got, talking about Lord of the he, Rings here. He got asshole. smited by Sauron. So, what is the Strike Force going to do? <laughs> no one is talking about Lord of the Rings. Uh, I will go Strike Force. Yeah, I mean, this is if we've learned anything today, mm-hmm. it's that if you if you have the latest guns, you have a leg up, and these guys have them. Strike yeah. force. I mean, Frodo had the latest guns, that's why he was able to destroy the One Ring. Yeah. I mean, no like one's I talking said, about <laughs> Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm wondering if maybe I should, in, in retrospect, now that I know these, I didn't see. I didn't know how what version. Like, was it V1, V2 of guns that the Strike Force had when it put right. this down? So it could have been <laughs> all the way at the one seat. Anyway, we'll find out. So let's finish off this bracket down below. Strike Force V Megalodon. Ooh. Oops. Pick Ooh. your fighter. This could be the finals, honestly. Yeah. They might have a Megalodon gun. They might have made one of those mm-hmm. just in case the Meg comes back. Mm-hmm. We don't know. The biggest latest, harpoon ever created. Latest right. guns versus the original shark. Everyone hated the Phantom Menace because it didn't have the latest Gungans. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> Misa had uh, old guns. <laughs> Misa squeak like a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Check I'm out up. Misa cum gutters. <laughs> <laughs> Megalodon versus Charger. Strike Force. Oh, Strike Force, yeah. Um, Megalodon, creature of lore. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, I think it lived. I, it went, I don't think it was just, I don't think it's just a fairy tale. I think it was a thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> it existed. Don't, don't read any books. No, it couldn't possibly be. On the fifth day, um, God created the megalodon. It's in the books. <laughs> and on the sixth day, He created the Strike Force. I believe that Strike Force, um, a, this amazing team of soldiers mm-hmm. can take down this giant beast wow. because they have the latest guns and they have skill. I'm going to go with Strike Force. <sighs> I guess well, how big is the Strike Force? Are we talking like 80 dudes, five dudes? Like, I don't think a Strike Force has 80 guys in it. I think no. you're getting carried away. <laughs> Look at the surgical team. It's like dudes piling out of a van. Like, like six to start. ten tops. I think. Yeah. Okay. All right. I assume it's like in a movie like when they're yeah, a group of guys is like taking over a warehouse or something. Yeah, like, they like jump out of the back of a yeah. swap van or something. Most yeah. of the strike forces are very concerned about warehouse control. That's usually the first. <laughs> well, that's where the goods are being moved. That like is illegal, where the good, illegal the, goods, where all the the black market taxidermied rats and dresses are being sold. <laughs> Get those rat titties out of there. <laughs> Get those taxidermied rats into this shipping container. Um, okay, I. you know what? I'm going to disagree. Have you guys oh, actually wow. seen the movie The Meg? Have you seen it? Uh, I saw the first one. I would not watch that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. This artiste over here is too good for it. Yeah. <laughs> you got to be real highfalutin to turn down the Meg. <laughs> I would not be caught dead with my pants down watching I, that's That's probably the right choice. But at one point in time, the Meg was the latest movie. So, you know, you missed out yeah. on the latest yeah. movie that we right. came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I have seen it. It's bad. Uh, but one Great thing argument I know so far. is that unless... <laughs> Unless Jason Statham is on the Strike Force team, you are not going to be able to take out the Meg, right? Like the rest of the military or whatever couldn't do it. So, uh, point of order though, wasn't there a Meg too? Yeah, I think it's like an even bigger Meg, like the Meg. Okay, mom so he didn't shit. take out all the Meg. He just took out a Meg. He took well, out. So if a you Meg. look at all the 
strike forces in movies. Jason yeah. Statham sound like half of them. <laughs> <laughs> is the Expendables a, a, is a classic? Yeah, the Expendables is a strike force. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Expendables is a strike force. You might say Fast and Furious team is kind of a strike force. Um, but uh, in this case, I don't think they have. Uh, I don't think they have Statham on the strike force. So I am going to go Meg, just specifically to make Geiger break the tie. Boy, this is a tough one. I did not go into this thinking the shark was the Meg. <laughs> like, because the shark started. It's canon. The shark just started <laughs> flopping around in a coliseum trying to nose a train over. And now <laughs> is the hulking behemoth of the deep. Um, Still doesn't really have water, I it, don't think. But. <laughs> <laughs> so this is Mega just rolling around slowly <laughs> like an idiot in a big coliseum. Look at that dumb fucking shark. He can't move. Um, so, so Novak, and you're telling of the events. Right. The Coliseum fills with fans. They just That's belly right. flop the Megalodon in there. Yeah. <laughs> like dying because it can't breathe. And the Strike Force guy just walks up, shoots it a couple times, double taps it in the head, and walks away. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> really you can't, can't put them in the ocean. So let's say, like, yeah. you got to go evens, right? So yeah. you put, there's like a large pool <laughs> <laughs> in the yeah. middle of the area. Yeah. Okay. I'm in it now. <laughs> oh, it's I at went least Olympic dive. size. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Statham was an Olympic diver. He could have just dove right off the diving board onto Strike the Strike Force just literally surrounds the pool, right? They just <laughs> run around the outside of the pool. Just <laughs> blasting bullets into the water. <laughs> 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 Machine gunning this fucking pool. <laughs> uh, this is oh yeah, I forgot they have rail guns. Those can go through the water. <laughs> I oh, think. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops! Whoops! Forgot they had rail guns. I I'm, I'm going to just start going for the thing that's the funniest to move on because Strike Force at the end of the day, it's just going to be hard to be. It's just a bunch of guys with guns. It's kind of lame. I'm not into the American military industrial complex. Okay, guys. Mm. What I am into. Fair. Is giant sharks that only Jason Statham apparently can kill, which is good. I hope he's next in the week, other half of the bracket. The number one seed <laughs> is the Oklahoma City Jason Statham. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh shit! <laughs> um, so I am going to take Megalodon, and we will have to see. Which again was never the character; it was just shark. Uh, and we will have to see uh, what happens next time. Okay, Great. we've got a cookie to go here. It's the Papadopoulos Biscotel- Biscotello <laughs> sandwich <Papadopoulos>. cookie. Papadopoulos. <laughs> sandwich cookie <laughs> with artificial vanilla flavored filling. It's like uh, Oreo in nature, but the outsides are a lot uh, larger. It's just kind of like-, like when you buy like yeah. a generic chocolate sandwich cookie from the store. Like it came with the pack with the yellow ones and the pink ones. Yeah. But this has the Papadopoulos stamp of approval. <laughs> All the latest letters in the title of this. Uh, Wasn't Papadopoulos stamp. the name of the family on Webster? Yeah. George Papadopoulos. Yep. So. Hell yeah. Nice catch. You're welcome. A little f- fact for you. <laughs> Webster. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Was an adult. <laughs> He was an adult. I know. <laughs> he wasn't what? a kid at all. <laughs> huh? He played Wait. the role of a child. Mm-hmm. Wait, what is Webster? I should look this up. And since you say he's an adult, I can check to see about the cum gun. <laughs> so, okay, never mind. What is Please Webster? don't check Webster's uh, cum gun. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. A, I... The picture came up and I stopped it. <laughs> I think that's highly unnecessary. Uh. <laughs> you can ch- check George Papadopoulos' cum gun. I think yeah, George that's... Papadopoulos was like a former football player. He's Alex Karras. He was a Hall of Fame defensive tackle for the Lions. Oh. Uh-huh. Um, so what is this show? It's like a young... Black kid goes to live with like a oh. white family, I think. Yeah. But like he was a little person, right? No, he wasn't. Oh. That's what you're saying. Yeah. He's an adult. No. Right. Emmanuel okay. I mean, Lewis, I think kid. his name was. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Right. And then they fight a Meg. <laughs> is he still with us? Is Webster still kicking? Yeah, he is. He's 53. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. 
I Here's think young. Alex Karras, they've got taxes every somewhere with nipple covers. <laughs> second part star. <laughs> no. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's how he wanted to go out. He's only got two nipples, uh, but there's six covers on his belly for some reason. <laughs> That's the they put the rat template for him. <laughs> oh boy! Okay, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> his his taxidermy corpse is in a shipping container somewhere, waiting for the strike force to find it. Warehouse full. We've of- located the Karis. <laughs> full, some warehouse full of Karis corpses. There's only one. I don't know. It's like, <laughs> his family, think. I guess. <laughs> he might also be alive. I don't know. <laughs> no, he's not. Oh, okay. All right. Just I've... to make sure you guys were fuckheads. This shipping yeah. container has all the latest taxidermied football players. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, this is my favorite of the night. I think the cream's pretty decent. The outside, the chocolate uh, cookie part, is fine. I think it's like very equivalent to a cookie I'd find in the store. Um, I actually think it would be good. My favorite ones you can get in the store have one side chocolate and the other side vanilla. You don't mm. find these in the store? Both. Where would you get like pick them off a tree? Like where do you get them from? <laughs> These are from the Papadopoulos tree. <laughs> <laughs> they're not amazing, but I think they're just decent solid. I'm gonna give them a little of a like that. So it's gonna be a close one here. Gary, what do you think? Um, to me they're just kinda basic. Uh they don't the cookies don't taste like chocolate. They're just kinda there. Um, and the cream is not awesome. It's fine. Mm. I mean, it's sugar cream. It's hard to fuck yeah. it up. But um, I'd just give it a minute different. I think if the if the cookies taste like actual chocolate, I would like them. As it is, this is just like, this is the most generic chocolate sandwich cookie, cookie you could buy um, at a store. So I would say, like, a, like I said, indifferent to that. Okay. So... Uh... Previously, the chocolate chip cookies, the fancy pants, crispy chocolate chip cookies had two likes and an indifferent. Mm-hmm. These, the Papadopoulos's, have a like and an indifferent. So, mm. Chad, if you like them, we got a tie. What do you think? <sighs> okay, all, all three of these were a little disappointing to me tonight. I admit I bought all three of these with like, oh, these three all, maybe the pumpkin spice less so, but these three all sort of had love dat potentials to them. But none of them have delivered. I, 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 I kind of see what Geiger's saying where he's saying that these taste like sort of like the basic, like this could be like Walmart brand Oreo right. kind of thing, right? Like with that flavor, I, I want a little more flavor from it. But the flavor that is there, I think, is good. These are also my favorite of the night. They need more cream. Uh, the, the the ratio here is too cookie heavy. Um, yeah, not mm-hmm. not creamy enough. Um, but uh, they they are still the best tonight. I am going to give them a like that. So we do have a tie. But Geiger, you preferred the fancy pants. Novak, you yeah. prefer these Oreos. I also prefer, or not Oreos, Papadopoulos. Uh, <laughs> I also prefer. Valor. I also prefer the Papadopoulos. So slight mm-hmm. edge to the to the Papadopoulos. That's fair. And I like. I do. Th- I was just about to say they are very fun to say the name Papadopoulos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Papadopoulos with the win. All right, it's not even the whole name. It's just a good <laughs> <laughs> Biscotello. That's right. not as Geiger. Well yeah. Where can the listeners contact us? All right. If you have the corpse of Alex Karras uh, covered in nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got it? Who's got it? <laughs> Who's got it? Unsolved we got strike, mysteries. We got a strike force on the loose looking for it. Um, it's the new Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. There's just so many nipples. Uh, that's my Harrison Ford. Who was that? <laughs> Indiana hey. Jones and the taxidermi- taxidermied corpse. <laughs> so many nipples. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see that new Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the many nipple football player. You see um, that latest movie where he talks about the nipples? 
Yeah. <laughs> Look, there. It's the Papadopoulos. Um, <laughs> Why do you sound like Christian Bale Batman? <laughs> <laughs> I hate snakes. Swear to me. <laughs> That's the only thing I know, India. <laughs> um, when you have put the nipple covers on the rat, then you have my permission to die. <laughs> so fucking dumb. Uh, <laughs> um... If you are that poor lady that'll never have a man at her house again and work at 12 hours to <laughs> cover a rat's nipples, uh, if you're the poor guy that has to freeze a bunch of dead rats and send it to some kook, uh, if you are a strike force, if you're a member of a strike force, let us know what your role in the strike force is. Are you the sniper? <laughs> are you the spotter? Are you the hand to hand guy? Are you uh-huh. the guy with the Night rocket vision. launcher? Night vision goggles um, guy? Yeah. Are you. <laughs> Megalodon expert. <laughs> all, the, all the good stuff. Um, if you're the indoor football guy crawling through vent. Oh, vent guy is important. Yeah. If you're the tech mm-hmm. nerd giving the instructions on the phone. If you're the one uh, guy that has a really good jump kick. Yeah. Right. I don't Explosives. think Strike Force has Wheelman, right? I don't think Strike Force <laughs> needs a getaway driver necessarily. They're, they just mm-hmm. kill all the people inside. So there's no one to rat out to the cops. Uh, right. Or they're. Actually, part of the military. I guess they're not everyone m- in the whole. <laughs> <laughs> they're not murdering people, so there's no witnesses to what they've done. <laughs> Wait a minute. I think we're all the criminals, aren't we? I don't know what it's <laughs> Oops. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> that guy was just a security guard. I'm why we had to kill him. <laughs> Ooh, you just kill. I can't control this fucking rail gun. <laughs> oh, God. This thing goes through water and everything. What do you expect from me? Indiana Jones just grabs it with his bull whip. Put that down, son. <laughs> this is my straight force. I don't know where to fuck this up all right. Okay. Uh, if you don't know any of that shit, give us a call. And by call, I mean email. It's like you tried it at gmail.com or on Instagram, YouTube. Twitter, Facebook, all the social medias were just splattered all over it. They can't get enough of this. Uh, let us know what you think of our ratings. Let us know what you think of the snacks we've tried. Suggest new snacks. Suggest things for the mailbag. All that good stuff. Uh, let your friends and family know if you do enjoy the podcast. Maybe leave us a review and some stars. And as always, thanks for listening. Okay. Here's a little scenario for you. Yeah. Mm. Would you rather have... Um, Every pet you've ever owned in your life, mm-hmm. taxidermied and put around your house. Okay. So maybe it's not a lot. Maybe it is. But all the pets, there's like one in each room. And then once everyone gets, every room gets one, then you start again with the room getting two. Okay. Um, or. <laughs> Got to share the wealth. Thanks for the logistics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point is, you can't. You Detail. can't. They can't be. You, you can't, can't shove them all in a closet. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Or you can have one. Unless there's a closet in every room, and then you can put one in each closet. But then once you're full, then you got to put another in another closet. Can you imagine someone coming over, like, I'm just going to hang my coat off and cook. Oh, good Lord. All these dogs fall on top of them. Oh, yeah, that's where I keep the taxidermy pets. <laughs> <laughs> throw your coat or on chair. you only have to have one taxidermy item in your house, mm-hmm. but it's Alex Karras, former football player. <laughs> And I have, I would have to have like a taxidermy like hermit crab. That'd be kind of fucking weird, staring at me. Yeah. But probably not as yeah. Weird as that's the thing. As once I mentioned, you'll have uh, Alex Karras. You go talk about your hermit crab, <laughs> and how that's, that's gonna the weird creep you one out. Is your crab. <laughs> oh look, that's kind of a weird crab. And oh, is, is that Alex Karras? <laughs> you can, can I keep, stick. Can I keep him in Alex the closet anywhere you want? Well. You can't keep any of them in the closet, but you could place them in a room you don't go to frequently. Like every house has like a little office or something. Can he be in my shed outside? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. It's not a what room is... in your house. Oh, yeah, that's true. D- d- can he be? He doesn't have to be naked, right? He can wear clothes and stuff. Yeah, he just he looks like he did. In... <laughs> okay, so okay, but can the hermit <laughs> crab wear clothes? Key question. <laughs> he has a Rams uniform on. I don't know. <laughs> Why did you switch teams? 
Can the hermit crab also wear a full helmet and pads? <laughs> this is helmet crab. <laughs> um, it's a lot of animals. I think that'd be pretty weird. But... It's a lot of animals. How many animals yep. are you talking, Gaga? Well, like a bunch of cats growing up, and at least three dogs, and mm. uh, hermit crabs. You have a couple fish, per room. And, yeah, cats. Mm-hmm. Alex Karras was my pet for a while. <laughs> <laughs> kind of so I got Karras no matter what. Yeah, I mean, fuck you away, I guess. <laughs> do I want just Karras or do I want Karras to have some friends? I mean, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it'd be weird <laughs> having a mummified human in my house. I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> we have a 3D recreation of Karis's larynx. It makes this sound. <laughs> hot, hot, <bike. laughs> it, makes this, it, it makes this sound. Swear to me. <laughs> Papa double is. Yeah, you got to go with the pets, right? At least, like, you're going to look like a creep. I mean, you're going to look like a creep either way, but. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. It, Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. Well, we got that straightened out. <laughs> <laughs> now that that's been sorted. <laughs> You're All right. welcome. Yep. <laughs> That'll do it for this time. We'll be back next time. We're trying out three brand new stuff. Just- Papadopoulos.